Folks, this is one of those trips where I have no idea what the weather is going to do. No clue at all. I am out in the middle of nowhere. There's no one around and there's a winter storm on the way. We'll talk about the winter storm later on, but as far as the location goes, this is a very interesting spot. I'm off trail, basically doing a loop. I am somewhat familiar with this area and ultimately I will be camping at a place that you all have seen before. It will take a while to get there though. This episode is all about budget friendly gear, namely from Nature Hike. I have three pieces of gear from the company that I'm testing out for this trip. I have the 60 plus 5 liter backpack, I have a sleeping pad and also a tent. Let's see how good these products are. That's what this episode is all about. Secondly, is the winter storm. I put this loop together the other night so that I could get out and test this gear in a set of adverse conditions. The loop that I've come up with is maybe three miles long, something like that. Most of it is in the woods, but there is a point where I will have to get onto a road and walk that for a bit. A big herd of deer have been sleeping here. You can see how they've used the leaves for bedding. Whew. It is time for a break, everyone. Whew. That has been some hard hiking. <laughs> Just plowing through the woods, very dense, very thick. 
I should do a quick tick check. Whew. Let's talk about a piece of gear here to start with. This is the Nature Hike. 60 plus 5 liter backpack. I purchased this with my own money so I could test this out, share my thoughts with you all. This is a very budget friendly pack that has some unique features to it. With this trip, it's not going to be a review of this product, but I will share my insights and my thoughts. At the same time, I have other Nature Hike products to test out, and we will see how well they do too. Okay, looking at the map here, right up here is where I need to hop into the woods. Now this is interesting. I found an old campsite. There's a fire ring and someone has been going to town on these trees here. Like this one here, it's been chopped up. This one over here, the exact same thing. That is interesting considering the fact that I'm really out in the middle of nowhere there's no trails out here, nothing like that, so, hmm. What the f is this? This is interesting, isn't it? So, there's a campsite down there. There's another one over here. To me, it looks like someone came out for a trip. The weather probably got bad, and they ditched. And they just left all of their garbage here. They were probably raging drunk. I mean, there's a hatchet on the ground. There's a tent over here, two chairs, a coffee press, and so on. And of course, they chopped down a bunch of living trees just for the fun of it. It's this sort of thing that really makes me sick. I wish these people were here right now. Hmm. There's no way that I can clean this up. There's just simply too much garbage. There's too much. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm getting closer to camp. I need to head through the woods, roughly quarter mile, and I should be there.
being honest for a moment, you do have to be careful when you're out in a remote area like this. Meth. A lot of people will make meth out here in the middle of nowhere. This is what I've been looking for. This is an old logging road, which will basically take me to my campsite. Coffee time, cheers everyone. Also, it is almost time for lunch. Some reindeer stew, real termat. Oh yeah. If you haven't heard of these meals before, you can find them in Europe. It's hard to find them in the United States. It is what it says it is, reindeer stew. And it's unbelievable. Ah, cheers, that's good. So here's the forecast. Significant winter storm approaching the area. Significant amounts of snow and sleet are expected with accumulations up to five inches. And all folks, that's a pretty good forecast. The problem, in my opinion, is the temperatures. The temp tonight is supposed to be right at 32 degrees. That's not very cold. When you have temps that close to freezing, it's a recipe for problems. All it takes is a little bit of a shift and what you have is freezing rain. And that is not what I want to go out and play in. Snow, sleet, it's one thing. You can handle that. Freezing rain is a completely different beast. I tend not to go out into freezing rainstorms all that much. It really does depend. And the deciding factor, of course, is the amount. A little bit of ice, no big deal. A quarter inch of ice or more, whew, that's just pure destruction. It'll take down trees, limbs. With this forecast, I will keep an eye on it. I'll check on it ever so often to make sure that it doesn't change. Because if this forecast changes, we will have to alter our plans. So, <laughs> that's how it goes, everyone. As the winter season is coming to an end, the storms are like this. You can have deep snow or you can have ice. All right, let's do this. 
Oh, man. Mm -mm -mm. That is the best tasting thing in the entire world. By the way, everyone, make sure to comment down below and share your thoughts. What do you all think about the image quality of this video? As good as the previous or better? I'm using a new camera, testing it out. I can't comment and say what it is yet. Because of my connections within the photography world, I get to test out a lot of new cameras. And so you all are guinea pigs <laughs> for my testing. So the color grading is my own. So that's not really on the camera. So if you like it, great. If you don't like it, don't blame the camera company. It's all me. That is so incredibly good. As you all can see, I have the tent set up. And before I talk about the tent, let's talk about this sleeping pad. This is the Nature Hike Ultralight sleeping pad. And I can tell you that this thing is anything but ultralight. I mean, it is a brick. This thing is over two pounds. It is very, very heavy. In fact, it's probably the heaviest sleeping pad that I own. Well, the heaviest backpacking sleeping pad that I own. This is a double-sided sleeping pad which means if one side gets punctured, the other side can be inflated. How useful of a feature is that? You know, that's up to you. Nature Hike does make an inflation bag for this, but unfortunately, I don't have one. So I have to inflate it with my mouth. With everything being set up, let's talk about gear here for a second. The tent is the Nature Hike Vic two-person tent. This is a, according to Nature Hike, a four-season single wall tent. Would I take this out into a massive wind and snowstorm? No, I wouldn't. But for a storm like this, where the snow and the sleet just supposed to come down, the winds aren't going to be strong, yes, this is doable. With it being a single wall tent, condensation may be a problem. We'll see about that. Now, I did notice that there are some nasty looking threads on the other side of this tent. The sleeping pad itself looks to be thick enough to be comfortable. It's also wide enough. With it being over two pounds, I really do see this more as a car camping sleeping pad, but the price is low. And yet with the price being low, there are other sleeping pads that are out on the market, which are just as thick, just as wide, which are much lighter and also roughly the same price. So with the backpack, carrying this around has been comfortable, but that's not to say that you should go out and buy this. I've been wearing this backpack with many layers on and it's comfortable, but at the house, I did a little bit of testing here. I put this on with just a t-shirt and it was fairly uncomfortable. The padding here is very thick. It's very hard. It's also very wide but the separation between the two harnesses is very little. You're looking at a distance here of roughly three and a half inches. Well, most people that I know have a neck thicker than three and a half inches. So the sides here on the harness basically rub the sides of your neck. And I did find this to be uncomfortable. Of course, I will continue testing this pack out. This is just one test out of many, and that goes for all of this gear. This is just one test. I have a lot of testing to do. I am concerned about this. I am concerned about it. Also, this is a fixed torso length. 
while I'm not sure what the torso length is that the company recommends, I believe it to be around 22 inches. If you have a longer torso length, this may work well for you. If you have a shorter torso length, this may not be the best fit. The next con that I have for this pack are the waist belt pockets. They're very, very narrow. You might be able to get your phone in there and that is it. Nothing else will fit inside of those pockets. They're ridiculously small. Those are the cons that I have for the pack so far. The pros are that this is a feature rich backpack. You have a mesh pocket. There's another pocket behind it. You have the main portion, the main body. It is a narrow pack, but it is tall. And as you all can see, it carries my loadout with no issues. Speaking of which, my loadout with food, water, gear is 25 pounds. The price of the Vic 2 tent at the time of filming was $128. The price of the sleeping pad was 50 bucks. And the price of this is $80. In total, for these three pieces of gear, this is $258. That's pretty budget friendly. I mean, easily you could spend that much on a tent or more. Now we're talking everyone. As far as the time goes, it's about five o'clock. I have a nice fire going. It's chilling down. I'd say right now, it's around 34 degrees. Not terribly cold, but there's enough moisture in the air that it seeks into your bones. All in all, it's been a very quiet day. I haven't seen anybody, I haven't talked to anyone. It's just me and the birds, and that's about it. Now, uh, speaking of the birds, The forest has grown silent. It was fairly active earlier today, but now it's quiet. Everything's hunkering down for the storm that's on the way. Unlike last year, this has been a good winter. We've received quite a bit of snow. There's been snow on the ground just about the entire winter, and that's a first in a long time. Now, of course, these winters aren't like they used to be. Even when I was a kid, it was quite a bit colder. I remember my brother and I walking up and down the creek and the creek would be frozen 100% solid and we would walk on it, break it. That was a lot of fun until you broke through and you hit the water and you soaked your shoe. That happened. Sometimes you went inside and just sometimes you just kept on going. <laughs> That's what the winters were like when I was a kid. Talking to my great grandfather when he was alive, he said that the winters were unbelievably brutal. And basically you worked all year long throughout the summer and whatnot to get ready for winter. It was all about working, putting back food, and then trying to stay warm. He said that was the biggest struggle. And oftentimes people would freeze to death. That was very common up here. Back in those times, it took a community to survive. Nobody could do it on their own. So your neighbor who had cattle, you would have to help them. And talking about the creeks freezing over, that was a big problem because you would have the cattle who would then try to cross the creeks. Sometimes they would, sometimes they would break through. If they crossed, sometimes they would scatter up into the mountains. He said that on numerous occasions, the winters would be so cold that the creeks would be frozen over all the way up till July. That's crazy.
It is just about dinner time. For dinner, I'm having something called meat soup from Real Termat. I have no idea what meat soup is. It says potato, beef, carrots, onions, leeks, celery, seasoning, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that yeah, sounds good. The temperature's dropping, it's getting cold. This fire feels amazing. It is super nice. I'm actually lucky to have this fire considering everything here is soaking wet. Just a few days ago, everything here was covered in snow and ice. So yeah, I'm lucky. I'm starting to see some dark clouds on the horizon coming this direction. The storm is not supposed to hit until later tonight. The warning goes into effect at seven, which is not too far from now. I think they say around midnight it will start snowing and sleeting, so we shall see. It's chilly, but in truth it's not cold, cold, and that concerns me. Again, 32 degrees with a snowstorm, I mean it really can just go any which way. It could be all snow, it could be all sleet, or it could be freezing rain. Nothing is scarier, in my opinion, than being in the forest when it's a big freezing rainstorm. The sound of the trees exploding under the weight. That's pretty scary, really. I've been in situations where trees real close are just falling apart. They're just exploding. It's pretty intense. Again, a little bit of ice, no big deal. A lot of ice is a major, major problem. I've already checked out this campsite. There's no dead trees around. But that doesn't mean that if it's an ice storm that I'm safe. With this trip, we have to play it by ear and we have to do so smartly. Now, when it comes to your wintertime adventures, if you're not experienced, that's okay. The one thing that I would like to share with you is this, a piece of advice. You have to know when to alter your plans. And that's something that can be difficult. It takes time, it takes experience, but you need to be able to make a decision on the fly that could completely alter your adventure. With this trip here, I'm planning for the best, but I'm prepared for the worst. Not only in my truck, which is not terribly far away, I have tons of gear, so if I get stuck in the middle of nowhere, right, I'm going to be okay. If for some reason that I have to bail on this trip, I'm prepared to do so. I love coming out for these wintertime adventures, but I wanna make sure that you understand that I'm always safe. I'm taking every single precaution, and if I need to change my plans, I will. And the same applies to you. You should be the exact same way, if need be. It is such a nice evening. It's completely silent other than the jet overhead. I mean, nothing out here is making a peep. That's one aspect to a winter storm which I absolutely love, is the silence. Only in certain circumstances will you experience that, just complete silence. The plan for the rest of the evening is pretty simple. Kick back, relax, enjoy the fire, hop in the tent, read my book, await a snowstorm. For a second there, it sounded like somebody was talking. Whew. Yeah, it's definitely chilly. There's a lot of moisture in the air. But it feels good to be inside of the tent. We'll see how well it performs. Ventilation, condensation. That's what I'm interested in. Yeah, we shall see. We shall see. Everyone, I'm going to read my book. I've been reading Red Dragon which is part of like the Hannibal Lecter series. It's pretty crazy. Good night for now, everyone. I'll bring you all back 
soon. Bye, folks. As you walk in here, it is precipitating outside quite heavily. Unfortunately, it is freezing rain. It is just flat out pouring the rain right now. And already this tent is beginning to ice up and so is the forest. I had this feeling. I had a feeling this was going to happen. Snow and sleet accumulations one to three inches. Ice up to half an inch. That is absolutely what I did not want. Impacts, power outages, and tree damage are likely. Travel could be impossible. I think I will stay put for the night. I'll set an alarm, get up very early, pack up, and head to the truck. As I'm hiking to the truck, I'll pay attention to the conditions and make a decision from there. Do I stay in the truck or do I go? And maybe every quarter mile, I'll get out and check the road. Even if I can't get home, I wanna get out of here. I wanna get out into an open spot. It's just too forested here. That's the plan. I'll get up early, hike out, and hopefully drive out. If it's too slick, I will come up with another plan. <laughs> That's how it goes, folks. That's how it goes. Good morning, everybody. It is about 6.30, and I have quite a bit to report. First off, it's raining heavily outside. While the tent is, or seems to be, waterproof so far, there is a ton of condensation inside of this, and it's just raining down on top of me. My sleeping bag, the outside is getting wet, and unfortunately, because it's just raining down, I'm having to hide underneath my sleeping bag. So, it's a little bit miserable. The sleeping pad that I'm on is not very good. I'm a side sleeper, and this pad is not made for that. It's very uncomfortable. My hips push into the ground. If you can lay on this on your back or on your stomach, you'll be fine, but... If you're a side sleeper, forget about it. If you toss and turn, forget about it. My current plan is to wait the first light and then get out of here. I'm going to pack up, bolt, get to the truck, and then make a decision on what to do next. All right, everyone, it is time to get out of here. Let the adventure begin, right? <laughs> Folks, it is a thunderstorm out there. Woo! Rock and roll, man. Let's do this. <laughs> I love it. Look at all that moisture. Holy crap. <laughs> All right. Whew. 
All right, here we go. Wow. It has been raining a lot. As I mentioned yesterday, I'm not all that far from the truck. Maybe a half mile. But, um, yeah. There's a lot of ice on these trees. I need to get out of here right now. So far, the ground is not slick. There's just so much water on it. I think I'll be okay, at least for now. All right, well, it looks like I got it all. Let's get out of here. My plan is to get out and check the road every half mile. It's important to go about this as smartly as possible, as safely as possible. Okay, well, I just put the truck in full wheel drive. It's slick. It's very slick. I may have to simply just pull over and wait this out. Let's see what it's like out here. going to keep going it's not super bad it's slick in spots but I think I can make it so far the most important thing is to get out of here before the ice gets too thick already it's building up pretty good some limbs are coming down there's a couple trees that have come down but luckily not directly into the road so I don't have to deal with them but This section up here is about to get steep. I want to get out and check the road real quick.
this is getting icy. I'm going to stay close to the ditch rather than this side. <laughs> you have to pick one, folks. Go in the ditch or go off the mountain. The road seems to be fine. This road is closed. All right. Well, everyone, I'm going to get out of here, get back on the road, and head to the house. This is not exactly how I expected this adventure to come to an end, but uh, <laughs> it is what it is. Everyone, thank you so much for joining me for this trip. Make sure to check out the After the Camp episode for this. I will discuss all of the gear, my thoughts, and so on. So yeah, make sure to check that out. If you like this episode, hit the thumbs up. I do appreciate it. Strength and honor, everyone. Be safe out there. I'll see you soon.